Last episode, we secured our very first Premier League title with Forest Green Rovers, winning the league with over 100 points. Today, we enter a new season and the transfer window is open. And there is one player who we want to sign. Welcome back, everybody, to Season 6, Episode 1 of our Road to Glory career mode. I hope I find you well. Now, if you did watch the last video, you'll know who we are talking about. Diego Lopez left us last year to join Real Madrid in a 300 plus million pound move. And today we're going to try and bring him back. It won't be for anywhere near 300 million pounds. And as it stands right now, we haven't got enough money to actually bring him in. So I was looking through the squad to see if we maybe could sell one or two players on to free up some funds to allow us to make an offer for him. And in the end, I decided that there was potentially two players. Number one, Facer, who's been out on loan at PSG at this, uh, or last season, I should say. Um, we loaned him out. He didn't really perform very well for us. He was making a few mistakes at left back. His value is pretty good. So he's one of the players I looked at. The second one was maybe Lacerda, who was worth £33 million. So... As I scroll through here, we also transfer listed a couple of players. Perez is now transfer listed and we'll cover those at a later stage in the video. We sat down with Zidane and we said, look, we want to bring Lopez back. He's not had the best time in Spain. Can we do the deal? So originally they wanted £186 million. So I thought it's doable. We definitely can make £186 million. 130, they said they wanted to take some time and think about it, which usually means that they're not going to accept it. But when we took Real Madrid on for a friendly, he wasn't even in the team. So that said everything that I needed to know, that they were willing to maybe let him go. So I had to stay with it. I had to keep offering a deal for him. Now they came back and opted it to 190 something, which I didn't understand as they told us before, 186. So it went up by like 10 million. Um, so I recall Facer. Rejected that and I was thinking, how am I going to do this? So Lance Moore wasn't a player that I was looking to get rid of. We just offered him a new deal. He had a year left on his contract. The deal had a minimum fee release clause in it, which I wasn't too worried about at the time. Arsenal, as soon as that minimum fee release clause was in, came in, made the offer. I couldn't offer him a new deal to get rid of that. So Lance Moore, who lost his spot, he looks like to be a formidable goalkeeper in the future... He lost his spot last year to Henderson, who has been unbelievable for us, has left £27.7 million to Arsenal. He'll do a really good job for them. He's only 18. He's got a bright future ahead of him. But that gave us some funds in order to maybe get this deal over the line. So we offered Facer, firstly, as part of the deal. £37 million of value there. Facer is into the last year of his contract as well. So I wanted to make sure we used him as part of this deal. And £130 million on top. Now, again, they said they wanted some time to think about it, which I knew what that meant. It meant no. So I was again scratching my head, wondering how we were going to get this done. They came back and wanted 190 plus facer, not a chance. So we negotiated. We went back in. I upped it to 135. They said no. So they wanted 177. And after some long negotiating, eventually, as I put in an offer for 140, which you're about to see, Zidane said yes. So we were able to talk to Lopez about a potential move back to the club. The issue was, though, I wasn't sure how much he would want in the way of his wages. Here's the offer for 140. I also had to, uh, to come back to live commentary because at this point in time, I was hyped. I was hyped when I saw that message and I thought, this is it. He's coming back. Or is he? Let's find out. The deal has been agreed. Facer to Real Madrid plus 140 million pounds. We're on the verge of bringing him back. But he's on 500,000 pounds a week at Real Madrid. And I'm not sure we'll be able to match those wages, Diego. So it's up to you. How much do you want the return back home? to Forest Green Rovers. Will he be willing to take a pay cut, essentially? We, we won't be able to give him anywhere near that sort of money. I think the highest we probably will be able to give him is maybe 300,000 pound a week. So 
We'll see what he says. So squad roll. There's only one choice here. It's got to be crucial. And I'm sure he'll be happy with that. I mean, it's great to see him back in our office, isn't it? Just seeing him around the uh, the club again brings a smile to my face. All right. I'm going to give him a five-year deal as well. I want to protect us here. Make sure he's here for the foreseeable future. No release clause as well, Diego. But this is the big bit. For a player of his quality... What's he going to want? I said 300, didn't I? Please don't say it's insulting. We could go higher, actually. I've just realised we have got a bit of money left in the wages. He's nodding his head. Or left in the transfer budget, I should say. So what will he say to this? I'm not going to skip through. Okay. So he hasn't said it's insulting, but he wants £320,000. And he wants a signing bonus as well with an appearance bonus. So what I'll do, I'll reject the... Appearance bonus, but I'll bump this up to £340,000 a week. And that should be enough. Say yes, Diego. You want to come back. If, by the way, as well, he agrees to this, I will give a new contract to Solano to match his. It's done. Ladies and gentlemen, Diego is back. Yes! Like I was saying, I will give a new deal. Over to Solano as well to match his importance to the team. I can't, I actually can't believe it that he's back already. He had a bit of a, I guess, hit and miss season with Real Madrid. Did not feature in the Champions League for them like we thought he would. But none of that matters now because he's back and he will play in the Champions League with Forest Green Rovers. One of the world's best. I'm not sure what shirt number he will be. Um... He was seven when he was with us last time, but Vargas now has that, so we'll see. And like I said about the deal for Solano, he's on £60,000 a week at the moment. So let's go ahead and uh, give him a new contract while we are at it. I'm actually buzzing. Really, really, really happy right now. Okay, so Solano, let's make sure he got a new deal as well because he deserves it. He's um, He's been a, a real star in this side and... It's only fair that we give him more money now than he's on at the moment, especially with us paying that much for Lopez, right? You know, if this was FM, he would probably come to us and say, look, I want a new contract as well. Let's talk about the money. Should we give him £200,000 a week? I mean, it is a lot, but at the end of the day, he's one of the best strikers in the world, and I want to keep him happy. Solano, new contract as well, £200,000 a week. You might be thinking, what on earth are you doing, DJ, paying out this much money for players? But these are the two that have been with us since the start. And to tie them down to a four-year and a five-year deal, added to the fact that St. Maximin is also here on a four-year deal as well, those three essentially are the best front three, in my opinion, in the league. In fact, could even argue they're the best three in the world. I'm going to have a little look around as well. See, I might give some new contracts out to some star players from last season. We'll see. Um, not like I need to, just because to give them the money. The likes of Kovalenko, St. Maximin, Vargas. Although, with Lopez coming in, maybe Vargas won't be staying. We'll see. In the end, we gave out three new deals. St. Maximin is now on £120,000 a week. Uh, Dean Henderson has improved to £74,000 a week. And as you'll see in a moment, Kovalenko eventually agrees to a £70,000 a week wages. Um, initially, he wanted a release clause, and I did not want that, so I had to speak to him. But yeah, he accepted that 70000 So new deals for those three players. There might be some more that we, uh, we improve later on down the line. But it was time for our first game of this new season, Manchester City. A nice opponent to start us off. It was the Community Shield, which, as I've said before, not a massively important game for me. And as you'll see, there is no Diego Lopez in the starting 11. I wanted to rest him and make sure that he was ready for that first Premier League game because we've actually got Spurs as our opening Premier League fixture. So not an easy one, that one. And we'll see how that game goes later on. This one against Manchester City, though. Solano doing what Solano does best as he puts us in front. His initial shot was blocked, but it fell back to him and he made no mistake with the second finish. And then in the 17th minute of the game, Dest in possession. Nice to see him back following his injury last season. Was taken out by Leroy Sane and the referee 
ran over and immediately made his decision. A red card for Sane. And you'll see the reaction in a moment of uh, Pep Guardiola. He was not happy with that challenge. And looking at it at the second time from the replay, I can now see why the red was given. I thought it was harsh initially, but yeah, it's not a good tackle at all. But actually, I felt like City played better with only 10 players on the pitch because after that red card came through, they started to dominate the game a little bit and they were back into it just before half-time. Bernardo Silva with the goal to make it 1-1. I was, um, yeah, a little bit surprised by that as well because I thought we'd just go on to get the 1-0 win, dominate the game or whatever. But with half an hour to play, Solano made sure with his second of the match. And at this point in time, no mistake from us. It was about making sure we did not let City back into the game. And as you'll see, it's exactly how it played out. And I wanted to show you the finish from this angle as well. If he does this this season with Lopez in the team, we might be able to get some Champions League glory. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves yet. We've not even seen the draw. We don't know the group. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. 2-1 win, though, to start the season off in the Community Shield. And a quick look at us lifting the trophy as well. No over-the-top celebrations from us, though, because we know that this is just the start. Now, to show you the top deals of the transfer window, Lopez is number one. He was number one last year as well. Phil Foden has left Manchester City to join PSG, so that might help us in our defence of the title. Uh, he's a quality player and uh, he'll be a big miss for them. Uh, alongside that, Zaniolo has gone to Barcelona, so maybe somebody will meet in the Champions League this year. For our own club, though, and the deals that we've done, there's not really a lot to show you, but these are the outs. Augustinson has left for £10 million to Watford and a few youth players as well leaving for um, small fees, but fees that might be of use to us later on down the line. And it was time for our opening day of the Premier League. One player in particular was the man to watch from this one. There he is, starting the game in a front three, St. Maximin, Solano and Lopez. Let's see how the game went though. Here is Lodi for Spurs on the left-hand side. Skips past the challenge of Dest. Unmarked is Timo Werner. And the first chance goes the way of Spurs. It might be a return for Diego Lopez. But it's Spurs celebrating in the early stages of this game. Two chances at that from Timo Werner. The second time of asking, he puts it away. And I question how he was unmarked. It's the movement of Werner. Pedrosa, not really the man you want marking a striker, if I'm being honest. From a ball into the box, you're looking at Taribo or Ayer to pick him up. It's Pedrosa and, yeah, there was only really going to be Werner winning that ball. Unfortunate that we didn't make the save on the second time. Still got plenty of time to go, though. But, yeah, this game, Spurs, we played them at the start of last season. I'm not sure if it was the first game or not. They beat us as well in that game. So they have proven to be quite the opponents at our place. Eriksen towards Werner, now up to Kane. The one-two was on, but Harry Kane, that goes through though. Ericsson makes it two. And as far as the game goes, this could not be going worse. Spurs are having this all too easy at the moment. It seems like every pass they play, they've always got an option. And that option seems to work that they then create the chance. I thought initially Harry Kane should have played the one-two through. He goes back and then Ericsson is the man running through. First time, left foot, finishes in the bottom corner. I don't know what to say. We're 2-0 down in this game and really, we're not even in the game so far. Rodri towards Eriksson. Gets another shot away and this time Henderson will make the save to deny them a third goal in the game. We have switched to our three at the back formation onto attacking to see if that'll allow us to create something ourselves because we've seen nothing so far. Here is Lopez. Sees the run of Solano. Lovely ball through. Solano to finish. Get in. That's that duo that we know all too well. Lopez through. Solano doesn't miss. And you look at this as well. This is the area of the pitch that Lopez is so good at when he was here last time. I'm, I'm kind of playing him out wide, of course, in that 4-3-3. But now we've switched this 3-5-2. He plays up front alongside Solano. Dropped a little bit deeper. What a class finish as well from Christian Solano. And that is a big goal for us to get. I might just stick with the 3-5-2, uh, the honestly. We seem to play better attacking wise when we're in that formation so yeah we'll stay with it for now Spurs corner close to half time the cross into the middle Regani there and the two goal advantage is restored for the away side and that's rather frustrating because as soon as we've got ourselves back into the game 
They've gone straight up the other end and scored again. I mean, 2-1 at half time. We, we, we could have still managed to get back in the game here, but 3-1, I'm not so sure. Just sloppy defending. We've got three players, four players actually. In fact, five players at that near post and not one of them is able to challenge the man heading the ball. And then I, I still think Henderson possibly should do better. Oh, well. Here is Bardi through towards the on-running Lopez. Solano on the right-hand side of him. It's come back to Lopez. His shot straight at the goalkeeper. There could still be a chance though, and there is. Bardi will make sure. Let's pick up the ball and let's see if we can find another goal in this game. Spurs are looking like real title challengers though in this first game. They are playing some real good football and I'm struggling to, to kind of get the ball back off them. Now in that chance there though, Lopez when he has it, I'm actually looking for the, the ball back across to Solano. So that was quite unfortunate. The shot in the end straight at the keeper, it still worked out. But, um, yeah, that's not as I intended. We still got the goal, though. 20 minutes left. Two additional minutes by the referee. This will be the last chance for us. Spurs sat deep in their own half, not giving us too much. Solano is through. No shooting opportunity yet, though. Fires it back. That's not the intention. Vargas won't be able to make it happen. The pass from Solano was supposed to go to Gravenberch, but he overplayed it to Vargas instead. And we fall to a 3-2 defeat here on the opening day of the Premier League in our defence of the title. And Spurs look like they're a real side this year. They were the only team to beat us last season in our Premier League win. And that came in the first game, our first episode, I should say, not the first game of that, um, that season. So I think it was like the third game in. And they've done it again here at the New Lawn. We just can't seem to beat them at our place. Not the return for Lopez we were hoping for either. And that, my friends, is where we will end today's video. I want to thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy it, a like will be greatly appreciated. In terms of our transfer budget, we do have £10 million left with £100,000 a week. So in terms of what we have to use, it's not a lot. So I'm not sure if um, we'll make any more signings as of right now. It might require some players leaving the club. Um, the thing is as well, I'm not totally sure if De La Vega will still be staying. I, I want to keep hold of Vargas. I think he's the better player at the moment. Although De La Vega is the better potential, four-star, four-star, Vargas was the top assist maker in the Premier League last year. So if we are to let one of these two go, it most likely will be De La Vega. But we'll see. Um, as of right now, there's been no offers and it will have to be a good deal in order for us to let him go. Uh, Perez, Ayose Perez, he's transfer listed. We're just waiting for somebody to make an offer on him and then he will be leaving the club. Uh, there's a couple of other players as well who might be going. Turner for one. Uh, and as we scroll down, Mason, more these type of players who I just don't think will ever play for the club. Who have a little bit of value. No, not massive, but they, they could fetch maybe a couple of million up to five million. And that could help us out in buying at least one more player. In terms of our league position, obviously... Yeah, we lost that first game, but it's still massively early days. 37 more league games to go. We won the league, of course, last year, only losing one. Doesn't help, though, when you start off with the first game being a defeat. And if we look at our board expectations, my manager rating has now gone down to 63. Which is something we'll have to keep our eye on. Because if we end up getting sacked here, I will actually be fuming. You know, you look at the, what we've done. And I, I, I do appreciate, right, you have to... Go on what the board are asking you to do. Um, with the youth development being high and the financial being high, as opposed to the domestic and the continental success, I get it. But equally, who in their right mind would sack a manager who's won the club their first Premier League title, got them into the Champions League, and has essentially done well in the finances? Having said that, we are in the minus for profit, but we won't look at that too much. Minus 24 million. And I'm saying all this now, we might not actually get sacked. We, we might be fine. But just in case, right? Yeah, we'll have to keep our eye on that. But until next time, if you are around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below to follow me on the channel and help me get one step closer to 100,000 subscribers. Until next time, have a great day. Have a great evening. Stay safe, everybody. And I will see you all again very soon. Adios.